بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us within the Quran هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم He Allah sent amongst a people who did not understand the religion. People who were illiterate when it came to not just reading and writing, but they were uninformed about their beliefs. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know why they existed. They didn't understand the purpose of their lives. But Allah sent amongst them a messenger who was from amongst them, who was one of them, who understood them, who cried like they cried, he laughed like they laughed, he felt pain the way they felt pain. And he recited upon them the signs of God and the verses of Allah. And he purified them. And he taught them the Qur'an And he taught them wisdom He taught them the understanding of the Qur'an He taught them and showed them practically How to live their lives in accordance with the Qur'an They used to be lost But now they were lost no more because Allah sent them this messenger to show them how to live their lives meaningfully and with purpose. And there would be generations to come who had not yet joined them, but they would come after them and follow in their footsteps. And this is the manifestation of this ayah. This ayah number 3 from surah number 62, surah al-jumu'ah is about this gathering here today. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ God is almighty and Allah is most wise that He gave us this timeless tradition, this Qur'an, this way of the life of the Prophet ﷺ that is alive till today, leading us till today, guiding us till today. ذَلِكَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ This is the benevolence, the blessing of Allah. Allah. Allah guides, Allah gives to whomsoever He wills. Wallahu dhul fadl al And the blessings of Allah are truly innumerable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he raised the foundations of the Kaaba and he performed this really remarkable deed of building the Kaaba, raising the walls, the foundations of the Kaaba, the Baytullah. He made dua, Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasula. Oh Allah sent a messenger amongst those people. Yatalu alayhim ayatika. Who can recite upon them your signs and your verses. Wa yu'allihumul kitaba wal hikmah. He can teach them the book and how to live life in accordance with the book. Wa yuzakkihim. And he will make them the best version of themselves. Inna ka antal azizul hakim. You, O oh Allah, are fully capable. Oh, you, O oh Allah, can do anything that you wish and you can bring this to fruition and you can bring this to reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us about this remarkable Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Imagine there's a dead body, a lifeless being. And Allah says, then we granted that person life. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا Now not only is this person alive, their eyes are wide open, but if you're standing in a dark room and your eyes are wide open, you still can't see anything. You can't see your own hand in front of your face. But then what happens if your eyes open and you have light? Then the world is yours. You know where you're going. You see what you're doing. You understand. You know what to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this human being could have been a lifeless creature, but Allah gave us life. But Allah didn't just give us life, but more importantly, Allah gave us light. We can see the truth. We know the truth. Yamshi bihi finnas. Now if you have life 
and you have the light, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to share that light with everyone else. If, if you are in a room full of people and it just the electricity goes out, let's say there's a power outage, there's a thunderstorm and the lights go out, and you have a little lamp or you have some kind of flashlight, the right thing to do, the good thing to do is go and sit in the middle of the room and share that light with everyone. So Allah says, Yamshi bihi fin nas. And then that person takes their light and they walk around amongst humanity. They walk around in the world and they share that light with others. They illuminate the lives of others. The Muslim is a generous person. The Muslim is a gracious person. The Muslim is an enlightened person who thrives who enjoys sharing that light with other people. The most generous person with the Prophet And that's why the analogy of the Prophet is كريح المرسلة It was like a breeze that blows, a cool breeze that is blowing. And it touches everything, it touches everyone. Everything and everyone is cooled by it. That's the generosity of a believer. You can never compare that person to someone who is trapped in the darkness, unable to come out of their darkness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran telling us about this light that we have, this light that we have been granted as believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ya Ayyuhannasu, O humanity. This undefeatable, irrefutable proof and evidence has, been, has come to you from Allah. We have revealed to you this Quran that is an illuminating light. The Quran is constantly emphasizing this theme of light. Because everything changes with that. The ability to know what you're doing, the confidence that comes with that, the comfort, the consolation, the warmth, the serenity, the peace, the tranquility. And that is so central to this Islamic ideal. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, We sent down this book to you to remove the people from the layers upon layers upon layers, the different avenues, the different facets of darkness that people are buried under, that people are being crushed under, to remove them from that and to bring them into the singular light of Islam. The unifying light of Islam. That it brings all of us together. And it unites all of us. And it gives us that sense of confidence that we need. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that if we are able to realize this, we are able to understand this, then we will have found that confidence that we need to live life in accordance with that dream, that vision that the Prophet ﷺ presented. Where we will be practicing Islam. We will be embodying Iman, faith. And we will all be exemplifying and demonstrating to the world what Ihsan looks like. What excellence truly looks like. And this is the conviction this is the conviction that our religion comes with. The Prophet ﷺ, and I'll conclude with this, it's a very fascinating, beautiful interaction. The Prophet ﷺ, one time he asked a young companion, his name was Haritha. He said, كيف أصبحت يا Haritha? How are you doing this morning, O oh Haritha? And he said, أصبحت مؤمنا حقا يا رسول الله. I am a firm believer. My faith is strong. The Prophet ﷺ said, 
that there is a proof and evidence for every statement. What is the proof and the evidence of your statement? What is the reality of what you say? And he said that I live my life in such a way where I feel like I can hear the people of paradise laughing and enjoying themselves. I feel like I can hear the people in hellfire crying and screaming. When I feel like I am standing before my Lord, answering to Him, talking to Him when I pray. I feel like the life of the hereafter is a reality to me. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, Arafta falzam. You have recognized the truth, now it is your job to hold on to that truth. So we are all striving for that conviction. When you find that conviction, maybe you felt it in Ramadan. Maybe you felt it at Umrah or Hajj. Maybe you feel it when you open the Quran. Maybe you feel it when you're listening to someone motivate you about Islam. Whatever the case is, when you feel that conviction, then it's your job to hold on to that. To be firm on that and to keep building on that. We ask Allah Rabbana La tuziqulubana Ba'da idh hadaytana Wa hablana min ladunka rahma O oh Allah, once you have guided us Never ever let us go astray ever again And O oh Allah, keep increasing us in your mercy Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Jazakumullah khairan Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh